So my name is uh, Richard Rees. I'm the uh, uh, Associate Vice President for Teaching, Learning and Students at the University of Manchester. I think really um, having in my own sphere, which is which is looking at educational resources, having openness uh, is an enormous advantage because it means that people don't need to reinvent the wheel. Uh, and there's a lot of cases where uh, staff will need to be involved with the production of the materials that they're going to deliver. And in some cases that works really well, and in some cases there are things that are better that are out there. And having the availability of those materials out there can enormously help the teaching experience. There's, there's I think you know there's advantages for teachers that uh, they don't need to to remake things that are already there and perhaps are there better. But there's also an advantage to learners as well in accessing uh, open materials. And in some ways it shifts the onus of the educational experience away from a teacher-student relationship and gives more empowerment to students themselves to take more control over their learning experiences. So openness I think is, is a very good thing in terms of education. Probably the most uh, obvious example is the massive open online courses that we run and the open resources that are uh, uh, packaged together, if you like, as part of the, uh, the courses that we run. But there are many other examples as well where uh, materials have been produced uh, in one setting and are perhaps uh, either reused in that setting or repurposed for, for other um, activities as well. So um, there are a large number of examples where uh, the materials that have been produced by Manchester are used extensively elsewhere within the institution but also in other places as well. We've talked uh, a little bit about the benefits for, uh, for both staff and students. Uh, perhaps the, the more intangible benefits though are to get Manchester known as a place where excellent resources can be produced, excellent educational resources can be produced. Um, so, so one of the things that, that map onto the strategic agenda for the Manchester 2020 vision is for uh, by 2020 for the University of Manchester to produce an excellent teaching and learning experience. Part of that is getting known for having an excellent teaching and learning experience, not just producing one. And having excellent materials that can be used uh, around the world for the education of students both here and elsewhere is part of that process to really get Manchester on the map uh, to be known for the production of, uh, of excellent high quality teaching materials. Like I said, most of the things we've talked about are benefits, benefits to learners, benefits to, to staff who are, who are teaching on these courses. There are some downsides, of course, as well. Um, the, the, probably the biggest one is, is cost, that the, the cost of the production of these materials is, is on, the, um, on the producer. Uh, and so as long as everyone acts in an altruistic fashion and makes a lot of things open, then perhaps you can get some of that cost back. Uh, for the production of the materials. Clearly if it's just one institution or you know, a few institutions that are producing these materials then the cost can be significant on those, on those institutions for the production of these very high quality materials. Uh, so it, it, I think a lot of it needs to, to really get into to the notion of, of why we want to do openness itself and, and it really does get the whole of the community involved. It's not just a few institutions that can produce uh, these high quality um, resources but many institutions can both produce and use these types of resources uh, as, the, as they go on from there. So that's, that's one of the downsides. The other downside I think is, is uh, a notion of quality. I think at the University of Manchester we want to produce quality resources and that's what we try and make sure that all of our resources are. Anyone who's looked on Google for any uh, topic that they are interested in teaching perhaps for the first time will know that not all of the resources are high quality. So it, it's really trying to, to make sure that what uh, we as an institution producer are of the highest possible quality, but then surveying the other things that are out there to have some kind of knowledge of what is good and what is perhaps not so good. And of course what's good in one context may not necessarily be bad in another context. So, so that there, are, there are changes that are there. Again, it, it's uh, down to individual instructors or individual students to, to try and figure out what's right for them. Openness can, can stop people reinventing the wheel. That's, that's certainly one thing. Uh, and it can certainly get the University of Manchester's uh, name for education out there much more widely. Perhaps more widely into um, areas that we are not perhaps 
uh, well known in uh, at the moment. So uh, again, going back to the to the Manchester 2020 vision, uh, we want to make sure that uh, we have educational um, activities that are available for all. Uh, so be they from disadvantaged backgrounds or from underrepresented uh, groups of the uh, of the population. So again, we can start to use these, and we are starting to use these as mechanisms to show what the University of Manchester does and to show how the sorts of uh, activities that students who come here are going to be exposed to, but also uh, using them for other resources as well. Well, I, I think here you, you always have to go back to your uh, your home discipline. I think uh, so. So I, I use open resources in in my own teaching, and and a number of the the things that I teach on. So I'm a biologist by training, and, and I deal with uh, with DNA molecules mainly. Uh, so so some of the the open resources that really try to explain how DNA as a molecule works how it's taken apart, how it's replicated, how gene expression uh, occurs, all of those sorts of areas have a very rich history of open resources being associated with them. And, and as a teacher, being able to take bits and pieces from um, various aspects of resources that have already been produced, all very high quality, means that I can tailor something for my own students, my own needs, if you like. So I can uh, concentrate on a particular aspect that I think I can add value to and not necessarily have to worry about the production of uh, high quality models or other types of um, AV materials or other things that, uh, that have already been produced. I think uh, you know it comes comes back to what what those goals are and how we are um, tangibly going to achieve them. You know we, we we are determined to create a rich and and, and vibrant uh, atmosphere for our students, be they on campus or off campus. Uh, now. Traditionally, I think open resources have, have often been thought of as uh, electronic resources and therefore they map onto distance learning or uh, students who are interacting through Blackboard um, with materials. Of course, they don't always have to be that. And uh, are many of the, the open resources that, uh, that we have uh, are paper-based resources that you can then use in classrooms. But all of, all of that um, together really creates this very vibrant uh, and interesting uh, educational environment. Uh, you know, clearly, you need good teachers there. Don't get me wrong. Uh, you know, but you know, using educational resources that are open in this context, um, although it puts some of the uh, uh, emphasis on the learning experience, good teachers are still required in order to uh, direct students through these appropriate resources. And again, giving the students a particular notion or a particular slant on the topic that perhaps they wouldn't have got just from looking at the resources themselves. So, so for me, um, openness is, is, a, is a, a vital part of being able to show that the University of Manchester is doing the right things. Uh, it, to attract students to, to come to the institution because they can know what they can expect in terms of their teaching quality and the way that uh, materials are presented to them. Uh, but then also, once students are here, we can continue to excite and uh, stimulate them uh, academically so that they can become uh, the best that they can and reach their full potential.